You know, it takes you too much time to edit. Here, I'm gonna give you this apple. I want you to use this apple. It's nothing to do with time. You just care less. Hey. Oh yeah. Welcome to another episode of Talking Trucks. Yes. Mr. Truck here, ready yeah. to talk about trucks. Yes, but today's episode is all about. It's actually called Ask Mr. Truck. What? Oh, uh, and that's why you're I here. I thought you said something else. Okay. <laughs> Ask Mr. Truck. Okay, there's a K in there. I saw that. And you can keep sending us uh, us questions to ask at tfltruck.com. And if we can answer it quickly, we will. If it's a big, long question, maybe you can um, um, send it to our Patreon page. That's right. We only have 30 minutes, so we only take two questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, during the show, we'll also answer questions. Uh, already a lot of people joining us, so thank you very much. And as always, we have some swag. If you donate a little bit of money to us, you don't have to donate. To but if you, do, yep. if you do, oh. yeah, five bucks puts you on a hood. Um, Ten bucks gets you a sticker. Uh, Twenty-five bucks gets you a patch for your jacket. Cool. And a hat. A hat. Do we have a hat? Woohoo! Uh, uh, hey. Yeah, hey. there's a hat. Keep your hands up. A hat down is there. 50 bucks. Yes. TFL hat. We'll, we'll get a couple more hats in the I studio. I always wanted to be on the hood. You know, I should can I do put, rap music. I know how to do it. Should I put your name up here? No, I put money behind it. I can't give you money. Okay. <clears throat> so John Cooper says, Mr. Truck for the win. What's up, TFL? Thank you, guys. Um, Alex asks, how the hell are you? Oh, I see. You're reading off that. I didn't know which page I was. Oh, here. Yeah, John Cooper says, Mr. Truck. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, how the hell are you? Oh, yeah, Alex, I am super cool. <laughs> 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 so, um, you just came back from Wyoming, didn't you, from the Chevy Silverado? Uh, yes, I just came also back from the North Sand Hills Recreational Center. Really? You were there uh, again? Yep, I was there a couple days with the kids. How was that? It was good. It was very good. We found some new trails, but my drone disappeared. What? My brand new drone flew Which, off into the horizon. Are you serious? You know, or they are you should making never, fun of me? No, it's a gray one. It should never make gray drones. They should be orange or flashing or... You know, pink, fluorescent, but don't make them silver because we look for okay, hours. Okay, here's, for 50 bucks, you can get a TFL truck hat like this. Yeehaw! Look at that. And we can sign it for you if you I've want. I've got one of these. Yes. So, so donated thank something. you very much. So, uh, the first question comes to us. It's a guy from Puerto uh, Rico on here. Yeah, so the first question is, when is the 2019 Chevy Silverado going to be on sale? Now. It's on sale now. Right you can now. go buy one right now. Right now. It's so we actually got a few pictures from you guys out there. Um, where um, Somebody, I forget the name, sorry, but um, found a trail bus at the dealership. Trail bus. Ooh, bing, five bucks. Holy cat. What? Jeez, they get four bings? Well, a lot of bings. You get pretty excited. This is Joseph, Joseph uh, Tuggle. What would you recommend for a cheap farm truck? I'm looking at old Rangers and old S10s. Opinions? Th that's the size he wants? Is it midsize? I mean, yeah, but old school midsize. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. You know, I think there's a, they sold more Rangers than anything back then before t Toyota got excitable. Yes. But, so you're going to find more Rangers. They're not going to be cheap now. There's new Rangers coming out. They all figured that out. They're just buying up the old stuff so they can kind of get ahead of the curve. So I would go with the Ranger. I mean, I, I, I really like that. S10 ZR2 that they had way back when the big fender flares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was ahead of its time, but I, a lot of the ones that I tried to find were like wore out in rest buckets. You're going to find more probably Rangers just because there was more sold. So I would say Ranger, Ranger. used to sell huge numbers. Oh, big numbers. But I have to ring the bell again. You ring it again five times. Okay. Because Jimmy Baskin donated 50 bucks. Holy cow! And he gets a lot lizard. Uh, Send thing him is, one. Uh, no, no, no. Only hats. Only hats? Only hats. But um, he's asking. Hey guys, need a trucker hat for the trucker. Awesome. I traded in my Colorado for a new Silverado too many times in the shop when I was home. Also, everyone signed the hat. So we got so, a big one now. Went from the midsize to the full so size. So you upgraded, was that the 19? Probably 19 truck, huh? Well, 19s are arriving at the dealerships. Here's a picture of one dealer with a new trail boss on the lot. Yeah, those are That's awesome. That's on the lot. That's my favorite look is the black wheels and the red one. I love but that But here's one. a question. Yes. Um, there's an embargo on driving impressions on the new Silverado. Yes. And we're not allowed to talk about it until Monday. Yeah. But what if somebody test drives this and talks about it? Well, that's fine. That's Really? Yeah, they're not going to embargo him. I mean, it's just us. We can't really... Dude, you're the moneymaker. 
Holy cow, this is wonderful. This I'm, I'm glad D I'm Dallin glad I'm donated five bucks. How would you compare these factory installed brake controllers to the aftermarket ones? Any preferences? <sighs> well, don't start <laughs> Mr. Truck on brake controllers. All right, a lot of good brake controllers out there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Prodigy, I'm a fan of Direct Link. There's a lot of the hydraulic ones that went away. The only I mean, I like the one from uh, from Ford is made by Sequent, which is kind of related to Concha and. And uh, Ram is made by, I used to know this stuff, I think Chevy's made by either Roush or, or the other company, Bosch, I get them confused. So, I mean, the suppliers there are supplying and, these components, you know, and right? I don't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not jabbing Ram, but Ram is one brake controller that I don't like. I mean, it, it works, but I've had more calls from dealers come in and complain about it, horse trader dealers, all these other guys that I work with. So, it's really hard for me to recommend the factory Ram one. I know a lot of friends who actually just unplug it and plug in an aftermarket one. So, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm not trying to dish Ram. This is, you know, from a lot of calls that I get and my own experience, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I could recommend the, the Ford and the GM from the factory. But what about, like, compared to aftermarket? I mean, there's a lot of good aftermarket brake controllers, right? Well, yeah, a nice thing about a factory one is you get the factory warranty. It goes with the truck, you know, how it's installed, and they can work on it if they have to. You know, that's kind of how it is. But you kind of feel for the aftermarket guys. They've been in this business forever, and all the manufacturers see them and see them and go, hey, we could sell that and make all the money. And that's what they're doing with hitches, with brake controllers, with everything. They're kind of cutting out the little guys. So, you know, that's kind of how that works. You just love that bell. Well, because we keep uh, getting donations and this questions. This is good. This is good. This is really good. Thank you so much. And also, Sergei Shevtsov says hello from Russia. So, привет. Uh, hello. And uh, Matt 4545 says, do you think Ram and Cummins will break 1,000 pound feet of torque rating? What about the exhaust brake? Uh, what about the exhaust brake? What break? about the exhaust brake? Yeah, what does um, that mean? I mean all I, heavy duties now basically have them. So everybody has them and we love exhaust brakes because it helps you come down the mountain. Yeah. But what about that 1,000 It'll pound happen. Feet? It'll happen. I guess, what are we, 935 now by four? Right. Or? So it's, yeah, it's going to happen. I just don't know when. I, I really hope they kind of tie all this stuff together with maybe trailer brakes, because if you don't have really powerful trailer brakes, the truck's doing all the work, those big weights. So, you know, a lot of time, it's time one of those big heavier trailers, we go to electric over hydraulic disc brakes. Because you know what really kills me is there's, there's hardly any laws on trailers. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. The rest of the country, rest of the world has really big laws on trailers. And if you bought, you know, 1991 on semis were required to have ABS brakes on their trailers. There's mm -hmm. even a light on the back that they test with. And here we are with all these trailers now going 30,000 pounds. There's no law for that. But we really, on those bigger trailers, you should have disc brakes, electric over hydraulic, ABS. It's all out there now. You know, I mean, that's just kind of how that's going. So, yeah, I think, though, we're going to hit 1,000 RPM it may, or 1,000 uh, foot pound feet of torque. It may not be for three or four years. Because, you know, it all depends on demand. If everybody's, if that, right. you know, the torque war has been going on for so long with these diesels. We're still waiting for GM to catch up on, you know, the numbers on the, the trailer weight. So, yeah, I couldn't predict when. Jimmy uh, donated another two bucks, so thank you very much. He says he didn't buy a 2019 Silverado. He bought a 2018. I probably got a good deal on it. He, yes, and he didn't Rebates. like the, quite the look, the new, the new yeah. stylish, sleek. Well, I, I do. I didn't look back in, what, 19 or 2007 when they were those giant bumpers that were plastic. I didn't like that look, but I, I really like this look. I mean, How, that, it that looks good in is, person, right? That truck is gorgeous. And, you know, Rowan pointed out that from the headlight down to about the midway, it looks like a Camaro. I never even noticed that, but it does. It looks it's got like, the squinty yeah, eyes. Yes, it's Roy Rogers squinty eyes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it's all about the look. It's all about uh, the bell today. Ten more bucks from TJ. What do you think about the '99 Dodge Dakota Sport? Dodge yeah. Dakota Sport? They yeah. still make those? No. Oh, from '99. Oh. <laughs> no. They had. I was trying to know what problems. <laughs> My nephew had a Dakota. And the best thing on that truck was the tailgate. It was made out of like a tank parts. It was heavy. <laughs> there was something that Dakota was really famous for having problems, and I can't remember if it was engine or transmission. There was something that was just way too light on them. They had a lot of problems. But uh, I, I would, yeah, I, from my own experience and what, being around them, I wouldn't recommend that old Dakota. I think Rams um, made a lot of improvements, and I don't think the Dakota was one of them. Maybe if they come out with a new one, it'll be a whole new truck. As far as style is concerned, and I like when they put the V8s in their Dakotas. Yes. Um, but the last generation, the last iteration with really big square headlights, mm -hmm. It looked more, I think, with like just macho. Yeah. And I really like that Dakota. And unfortunately, they went away. Well, they're a good-looking truck. My cousin has one, and you know he brags on it all the time. And I the crew cabs are kind of rare. I like that crew cab, but uh, yeah, it's it's 
take some research to find out. Well, you know, and the they said the Rams FCA said the the midsize tuck, the truck is coming back. Yeah. By 2022. Well, that would be good so, because so, we know it's going to be improved. Right. So we don't know what's going to be named. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be a Dakota or not. Yeah. And we don't know exactly when it's coming, but it's, it's something is coming. When it first um, came out, it was a very expensive truck, too. It was almost like a full size. Mm -hmm. Well, now all the mid sizes cost what a full size does. It makes, and they are growing in yeah, size. Yeah. In the old days, we had many trucks and they were way cheap and they got great fuel mileage. And that's not how it is now. Yeah. So let's keep going with some of the prepared questions. And still, still uh, add your questions to the chat room. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get it to as many as possible. Kay. By the way, ask at tfltruck.com is the email address for the, send us your uh, shipping address for the hats if, if you're getting the hat. And we've got to sign or, one of these hats. Is this or even the signed? sticker and yeah. stuff. Okay. So um, Josh just has a question, five bucks. Will the new Silverado Sierra have adaptive cruise control? Do you remember that? Oh, um, I don't think it's going to have it at, at the beginning. That. I mean, the Ram has it now for their 19. Right, a, Ford you know. has it. Oh, geez, um, that's a good question. I wish we we, uh, we would have been one of the prepared questions. We could have looked it up because I, you know, just got back from there, but I don't remember them talking about adaptive cruise control. I was asking more about the trailer. You know, everybody's got this thing where it measures your trailer going around a corner, mm -hmm. so you know those vehicles sneaking up. Right. And they don't have the it. The blind spot They have monitor. so many trailering things on this new 19 right. Silverado, but not that. But. I don't, I don't, I don't adaptive cruise control. I'm not sure why, but GM has been kind of slow to adapt that technology. Yeah. I mean, um, some some of the others, like Ford, has had it for a couple of years. Oh, a long time. Um, and I think it has to do with really, you know, just safety and how confident they are in those systems. Yeah. Well, and even Tundra maybe, has maybe, it now. We or maybe about, legal. Yeah, we talked about Tundra being so far back. Now they have it. It will have it. It will have it. So, our, our, so it is our, coming? Our producer says well, adaptive that's good. cruise I, is coming. I should, didn't look through my notes. And I, it's embargoed well, videos, there's so, so much information there, right? Well, there was. There there's was a lot of engines coming. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about the engines on the new Silverado. And it's not a break. It's not a. Uh, it's a breaking news for me because I pinned it out of. I kept walking around, following these engineers all over the place, and I made him tell me there is a towing mirror coming out for the Silverado, probably back in like December or something. Well, the the heavy duty prototypes have those big mirrors, right? And but I they're could, all wrapped in camouflage. Yeah, and it will attach to that same pedestal that's on the door, and not in the window. So it'll be up here. Yeah. Well, I, I okay. thought I kept asking, is this going to look like a ram, a single arm, and the thing? He goes, No, it's not going to look like a ram, which means it's going to come out, probably go up, and then it'll be centered. But they've gotten so good that all the semis have gotten to the single one. And when Ram did it the first year, they were shaking. They were the first ones to do it, and then in 2003, under heavy duties, it made it solid. And so that ran, or G, Silverado promised me it would be a nice solid mirror, but yeah, that'll be coming out like December. Yeah, so we'll see that. Um, somebody's asking, TJ is asking, Andre, which truck will you get to replace your Duramax? Right now I'm driving the Hummer H2, um, which is a cool truck, I think, because it's just odd and a lot of people don't like it, and, but I like it. And um, I might get, I'm waiting until all the trucks come out yeah, for the 19, right. so I can kind of test. We're gonna test them in October. So after that, maybe early next year, I'll, ma I'll make that choice. I really like the um, Ram 1500 off-road package. Right, right. Which is, I think, is a new, a good package with like a big horn. So I kind of like that, but I haven't made my decision yet. Chase, yeah. thank you, Chase. You gave us another 10 bucks. You're awesome. Cool. Do you guys think that any manufacturers will do a truck like the SRT10 Dodge again, or high-performance trucks like the Lightning, Ford Lightning? Um, you know, I've been pushing this question for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Well, th yeah, that means that they'll have something to put another Hellcat in. You know, they put a Hellcat in everything they make. But I so don't know I if it's <laughs> going to be street biased, right? Because oh. the Ram TRX is coming. They said it's coming. That's true. That's their off-road version. The well, giant truck. Yeah, they right. could make that truck serve both purpose if they put a giant Hellcat in that. But right. Yeah, and that's it, probably true. The SRT10, you know, I mean, that's when they were, they were taking parts off of the Viper, you know, the engine and the, and the transmission. It's, it's so now cool, Now they don't right? have a Viper to take parts off of, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure they have a few of V10s <laughs> lying around somewhere. No, but I think the trend is towards off-roading and overlanding. You know, that's a yeah, big trend. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and street I think trucks are tough. Street trucks. A lot of dealerships make their own packages oh, for yeah. street trucks. Yeah. So And a lot of aftermarket companies like Roush and, you know, some of those companies make giant, you know, superchargers yeah. that you can throw on your truck. So, well, but I don't know from factory. Remember Steve from Canada, Mr. Truck of Canada, has told us they got they got the only sport up there, sport edition. Yeah. But they're not bringing it to the states, right. so they do have a sport truck. And they had they had some kind of thing with uh, uh, two wheel drive and and the bigger motor and all that that we used to took the took to Bandemir a long time ago. But yeah, by the way, I mean, it could happen. By the way, guys, uh, I'm gonna put all of your names on the board. <laughs> I, I, there's so many donations, I, I can't quite catch up with your names. I will put them on the hood, I promise. 
Um, here's a question, Rem Rebel or Chevy Trail Boss? Can you make oh. that decision now or oh. do, do you need more like driving time? Well, need more driving time, but the Trail Boss has a two inch lift and that's really the majority of I it. Mean, you got skid plates and they've got different four drive systems, but there is more things on the Rebel with the air ride and a few other things that they do. I think the Rebel's got more equipment for off road. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably have to say Rebel in that case. I haven't driven the trail bus yet. I cannot answer that quite yet. Yeah. So uh, we'll drive it soon. Um, will the GMC 84, the off-road package, come with a six-person configuration, somebody was asking? It, it, Boom, another 50 bucks. Jeff Johnson, thank you. Um, I don't know that yet. I, I think um, the trail bus comes in two uh, flavors, custom and LT. Well, three, basically. Three, think of three. three. Think of LTZ is the third one. One oh, is called will the they custom. have a more luxurious one too? Yeah, but still all 5.3 engines, all you can get. And the lift on that is only rear on the rear. It's kind of like my old uh, high boy. That's why they lifted the back of that because the configuration for the steering to make the drive shafts and everything right, they had to lift the back end up. So mm -hmm. even the tra even the old uh, Ford 1971 high boy just was lifted on the back and that's what Trail Boss is. That block is on the back. They actually raised the control arm on the A-frame on the front to make everything fit. And they, they did a lot of things with tires and with springs. So it's older than suspension. They really tuned it well. I, I mean, I looked at the frame of that and how it's made, and uh, yeah, it's 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 got a lot of cool things underneath that. The four drive system is a little weird on those. Have you read about those? You know, they got one is on just which? on the uh, actually on the four wheel drive on the Silverados. The base one, as far as I can tell, is only a four high. Right. Then you have this crawl control to right. make it work kind of like a Which is a new speed. feature. Yeah, it's a new right. feature. And on the other one, you still have a high and low con uh, transfer case. Right. What I'm used to. So. So on actually on the TFL Truck YouTube channel this morning, Tommy did the video charting some of the changes of the yeah. new Silverado. Right. And he talked about, and he showed how the new quote unquote crawl control system works on the Chevy. Yeah. It's basically one foot operation on the gas. Right. Which is right. unique. Nobody else quite does the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's an yet. interesting system. They think that we too, that's another breaking news. We found out what that lease spring is. I've been asking these guys for six oh, that, months. Oh, that overload thing? Yes, it is a, f yeah, and it's, and you know, they had a lot of conflicting stories. Finally got the main engineer in charge of it, and it's made out, it's a fiberglass composite. So we know it's made out of fiberglass, and that was a similar system they used on the Corvette when the cross spring they had, right. like the old Model T went across sideways. That's interesting. Yeah, and, it, and they're saying that, you know, they've tested all, it saves 14 pounds, and you know, the big deal is it's all like on the high-end trucks. The other ones get the regular steel one, and then the max package isn't that it's a steel one thicker steel one. So guys that's, here, here that's this is why news, this is know? why we need Mr. Truck and TFL Truck is because there's so many different choices and options. I have to answer Jimmy's question. Jimmy Baskin donated more, $25 more. Um, and he says, uh, do you think that Chevy will bring out the Trailblazer based on the Colorado platform to compete against the Forerunner? Well, we have no information about well, this. Well, there is. You the guys blazer, see the that Was it the blazer? I thought it was a blazer you guys looked the at. The blazer it was, like, was... looks like a crossover right. crossed over by something. It doesn't look at all like a blazer. <laughs> so they like lost another me. Camaro. Yeah, they, look, they lost me because it doesn't... I want stuff that reflects some heritage. That doesn't reflect any heritage that I could see. So you guys were there. So. Right. So what, they, what Chevrolet did is they uh, unveiled the 2019 blazer, which is basically a crossover and it it's basically fits between the Equinox and the Traverse in the Chevy's lineup. And it's really stylish. It's really good looking. It looks to be uh, have, to have enough power, but it's not an off-road truck. Right. It's, it's, it's an a, actual crossover. It's a unibody. Right. It's yeah, a unibody. So. It's a high-performance crossover. So it's a completely different um, departure from traditional name. And the Trailblazer, we don't know if it's going to be available. So, you know, I, I wanted to ask, ask one question. Um, that came across my email recently, and it has to do with the Ford Excursion. Oh, yeah. So Ryan asks, should Ford Excursion make a comeback? And I actually answered it on tfltruck.com on our website, yeah. and I actually added a poll so people can, you guys can then actually put it, put in your answers. And, um, you know, Excursions, you used to be kind of in the sales when the Excursions were yes. out, right? Yes, I loved that 44 gallon tank. And <laughs> Big beast. And it was a super duty frame. I mean, what it was the rear end in that 430 or something? You could get a 430 or 373, and that's what hurt it the most. When they first came out, and, when it, and this is this is news too for you guys. Manufacturers, when they first come out with a new vehicle, 
they don't just send out the, the base ones. Those in, those dealers are forced to take the loaded ones. Well, that's because the trail boss is already at the dealers, that's right? That's how it is. So they, they force them into taking the expensive ones, so they don't have a whole lot of choice. Your first few trucks come across are the, the expensive. Yeah. And that's they brought this across, and they didn't give people axle ratios choices. So they sent out a lot of V10 gas engines with 430. I remember seeing them in Kansas. They had them for a year because nobody could afford to put gas in them. I mean, you, that combination of V10, 430 rear end, you're, you're lucky if you got nine miles a gallon. <laughs> yeah. And then right when they came out too, gas jumped from what it was, $1.18 to $1.75 back, you know, and whenever that Early was. Early 2000s, I yeah, guess. Yeah, 2003, 2004. Right. So when all that happened, everything went against it. So they didn't sell right off the bat. I mean, I, and the first ones I drove had the six liter diesel in them. And you know, six liter has its problems, but they got really good fuel mileage on those. So that was kind of what hurt, you know, and that, you'll see that just now, like Silverado, I bet you can't get a base work truck Silverado out there. You know, that's how they do it. They don't give us the cheap work trucks up front. They give us the ones they can make all the money on. They all do that. All the manuf truck manufacturers do that. Right. And we actually, uh, I think we have poll results here on the screen. 84% of TFL truck readers said, yes, bring back the excursion. Well, I, I had big <laughs> articles on my website back in the, you know, back when all this happened. I said, save the whale, keep the excursion, you know. They told us for years they're getting rid of it. And then they finally, whether it was 2005 right, or right, something, six. they got rid of it. Right. And it was a sad but day, but yeah, I love so that whale. My, my take on it is, is it's expensive to uh, create, um, design and develop a new vehicle, right? Well, not that it, one. You know, we talked about that. You can just throw it on the 250 frame, well, use the grill, use the front door, just build the back end, you got it. But That's you still have to, to crash it. test it and test it, you know, make sure the body works. Oh, it's but the same frame and all that, wouldn't that be the same kind of test? It wouldn't be too much, would it? Well, I don't it's know. Like 250 uh, it converted takes, to it a... It takes billions and billions of <laughs> they dollars. They tell us that, I know. To create they a new... vehicle. No, anyway, it's, a, it's still an investment, right? Yes. It's still an investment to create a new vehicle. And it has to have a business case. Do they yeah, think it's going to yeah. sell? If it's not going to sell, they're not going to build it. But I think right now the climate is a little unpredictable, you know, the yeah. markets. Yeah. But a, aluminum bodied um, Super Duty SUV that can tow over 10,000 pounds, I think it would do really well if it came out within a year. Yeah, and since Ford is going to be all truck company pretty yes. soon, maybe just a yes. Mustang, you know, it wouldn't hurt them to explore all directions in the truck market, and Expedition is doing so well. The Navigator from Lincoln, and that's not probably the best fuel mileage truck, if those are doing well, it's possible that Excursion would do well. That would be really hard for me to figure out. You know what I've discovered about this live show? What? Is we get so many questions from our viewers that we, why do a prepared thing? You're, you're never going to get all these questions answered. Well, we're, we're trying. We haven't even done the Keystone well, one here. Well, there we? is a lot of comments as well. well that's um, good, man. Excursion is, FX4, heck we wanna yeah. We want to make sure we can answer the questions for all the people that are watching too. I mean, I know you want to, to help everybody. Yes. So I guess so we, we didn't cover the Let's do the Keystone, uh, Keystone one. Okay. So here's a question that came in from Lucas. I just bought a trailer, which is a fifth wheel, right? Yeah. And it's a 27 RL Key, Laredo Keystone. Uh, empty weight is about 7,500 pounds. Uh, I'm guessing that the loaded weight or GVW on that trailer is around 10,000. That's my guess. It's about 27 feet long. But he says he doesn't have a truck to pull it. Is and this, this the guy who wanted the used truck for Yeah, 12, he wanted the used truck for 12 grand. Lucas, you, you're posing a tough question to us. Uh, 12 grand for a truck to pull approximately 10,000 pounds. Yeah. I was going to say... <laughs> I sold my Duramax. Right. That would right. have been the perfect truck. Yeah, for new this. injectors. It was a good truck. I would have bought it if you would have sold it for four thousand, but you sold it for what six? Twelve. You sold it for twelve. Yes. Oh, you really got that money wasn't out quite of that my one. truck, but uh, this is uh, you know a little bit newer than my truck. No, you don't have Mickey Mouse mirrors on your ears head. No, no Mickey but, Mouse uh, mirrors. But you know that uh, that's a good question. But twelve thousand dollars, you need to find one that has just had injectors done or something important done on it. And you probably want to go diesel because, I mean, now half tons will pull that kind of weight, but not every day. So if you're pulling it but every day. But they're expensive. Yes, yeah, so you right. pull it every day. It's another question indeed. But yeah. you can probably find, and that might be one of the, the cheaper ones. I mean, there'd be a lot of those out there. Uh, $12,000 ones, you know, that's like buying half a truck. It's really hard to, to figure out. This is his trailer, uh, by the way. Oh, um, we had the picture of his, of his trailer on. Yeah, and 10,000 pounds. I mean, any of those old diesels that have. You know, lower miles, you know, don't get one with 200,000 miles because we know you're going to do injectors and a few things. But if you can find one closer to 100,000 miles, and that's a good thing about the GM. They have the Allison in it. Some of those older, you know, Ford's 11 Ford transmission and some of the older Rams will still have all of that. That would probably be the worst thing against the Ram is that transmission. That's why they went to the ice in those heavy-duty, heavy-loaded ones where it was hard on that 68 RFE or back when it was a, 
I don't know what it was called before the 68. Was it a 58? It was a five-speed and a four-speed. They had all those different names for it, but uh -huh. an old diesel, an old Ram diesel with an old D Ram transmission may not be the best thing. But an Allison would probably be the best combination of transmission, but their engine is expensive to put injectors in. Right. And then there's certain years, like you had a 2002, that was a good year. 2001 had some problems. They all have, you got to look them up on a good form because... Not a first year, right, probably. Right, yeah. You, you want to go through there and try to find the ones like, a, I don't think you can think of 2005 as a good year because of a few emissions problems. So go on a forum, try to figure out which ones had the least amount of problems, and that's how you would narrow it down. Yeah, but I think if, you, if your budget is only 12 grand, Obviously, you have to look further into the past, yes. right? Probably, yeah. you know, like we're saying, 12 to 15 years as far as a good truck is concerned. Right, make sure it's and got an intercooler on it, make sure it's got a good transmission. Right, and probably, like you said, heavy duty, somebody super duper said a 7.3 liter power stroke yes. was a good motor. I just thought that would be, you would be going back older to get that. But no, 7.3 was wonderful. It was international diesel, it was great. There was only a few small things with that Jeb had to worry about. But that transmission, like a 4R110, the Ford had back then, was good. That was before the Allison. Actually, at, at that point in time, they had the best automatic, even though it was a Ford automatic and not, you know, like something, some other brand making it. So that one was good. But those back then, I would almost look for a manual transmission back that far. We got a donation from the Moskwa 007, which is Canadian, uh, Canadian dollars, 28, 28 bucks. Thank you so much. Uh, sticker, signed sticker. Yeah, heck yeah, we can give we you. Sign a, stickers now? Oh, uh, we could. We you could. Got a white well, marker. Uh, we have a silver marker. Okay. I don't know if that will last on the sticker, but we will. Uh, we'll definitely do that. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, I will put your name um, here, and I'll put everybody's name so I don't forget. Um, on. Uh, um, do you want to talk about start this uh, Ram thirty five hundred conversation? This That's test? a real long one, but yeah. Okay. Y yeah. <laughs> So can you, um, Ron, Ron says I'm getting ready to purchase 2018 Ram 3500. It is a dually. That's the question I had. Laramie Longhorn South Fork. Oh, that's a nice line. That's, I like that one. I am tied between one that has the air ride suspension and the other one that has the traditional leaf. I have a 42 foot fifth wheel. It tops out 16,000. Will the traditional leaves set up squat too much? I think kin kingpins around 23,000, oh, 2300, I mean. Yeah. Or should I go with air ride and live with a non-rake look? These trucks also have the 68 RFE and a 373. So there's really That's two questions here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we didn't, did we ever figure out the 410 is the only one that comes in the high output diesel with the Ison? Um, so I, I went into the configurator on the RAM site. So we, we did some research on this. But the real question is, for Ron, he likes that look where the rear end is higher when right, it's empty. Right, right. I'm not sure why, but, well, he, but he likes that look of truck. Ram's but, had that look for quite a while. But when you load it, it goes level, right? Yeah, well, or below the pin. Well, that's not a real heavy trader. If he was at maximum, it would go a little below level. Yeah. Uh, that's part of the thing why Ford jacked So he up. says he thinks that the air suspension helpers would always have him level. He doesn't like that? Well, you have that choice. You have a button. And if you've got to be a certain weight in 16,000 is over the weight of that. But that last one inch that levels you down is a button you push. So if mm -hmm. he doesn't push that button, he'll be up a little bit. But, you know, in empty, he'll be up even a little more. I, I don't know. I think I would go with the air. To me, the air rides better. The dualies don't, are pretty good. The 3500 single rear wheel is a little rougher ride, and I really like to go with air on that. But, you know, see, what it is on the Ram 3500 dually, it's a helper air. you still got leaves, and you got air on the inside of the axle. So it's like adding, you know, an air lift or something to a regular truck. But it's automatic, and I like their new automatic system on there. Their air is really good; it levels you out right, and then and with, with they've that, improved it every year. Right? Yes, they they've do. And, and that last one inch drop, just don't push the damn button. But you know, when you're empty, it'll so, still be up a bit. So it sounds like Ron maybe went to a dealership and saw a couple of trucks, um, and he says one is available without air, yeah. um, with 68 RFE transmission right, and right. not a high output, and the other one is available with with air helpers and the high output and 410 gears. Yes. But there's actually more choice. So so if you can go to maybe another dealership and look online, you can actually mix and match. A little bit. You know, you can get an air <laughs> system or not get air yeah, a little on bit, either yeah. one. So if you look a little bit harder, maybe you can get exactly what you want because you're spending a lot of money. But you right? had a good point earlier is if he's hauling often, Yes. You know, the icing might be the way to go. If you're but, crossing mountains. Right. If you're doing 16,000 right. pounds and you're doing it, you know, once every two months. See, the 68RE, the, the, the RFE, the one I like about it is 
it shifts more often. The Ison is built like a tank. But it doesn't, when, the, one, the experience I had with Sterling's, with Rams, with all those that had that combination, it shifted less times. And I like shifting more. And I almost, my theory is that it would get a little bit better fuel mileage. And they have improved those transmissions a lot. And, on the, and they're also getting a 100,000 five year warranty mm -hmm. on the transmission, on the diesel, on the, the, the whole thing. And I think that would, it would uh, be a bit, you know, it'd save you a lot of money. I mean, what is that? That icing is uh, almost $1,200? It's or $2,700. $2,700. So that ASIN transmission okay. is expensive. Yeah, that, in, in your situation, I would go with the 68 RFE, but. Okay, yeah, and, and this is not 30,000 pounds. Right. Yeah, I would right. say if you're towing heavy, 30, you know, the ASIN transmission is the way to go. Yeah, if you're hauling 25,000, I'd go with the ASIN. Yes. Yeah. I but but in this way, uh, this is, you know, uh, maybe 68 RFE is good for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we have a comment here. Multipurpose reviewer says we should have Mr. Truck on the show more often. Oh, cool. Because we make money when you're here. Well, you know what? I mean, every time I came. Huh? Out, Just keep coming. Okay. Every time that I would come here, you guys always took me out to lunch. And now you're doing this late afternoon thing. I haven't ate here. And oh, yes, right. You gave me a sandwich today because I complained about it. I complained. That's I gave how you get you, something done. The squeaky you a wheel deli, gets greased. A daily prepared ham sandwich. That was wonderful, Beth, because I bitched about it. I mean, I complained about it. But you know, I mean, I went weeks without eating food. I mean, it looked at me. I'm starting to starve. <laughs> My buttons all fit. Oh, wait a minute. Speaking I, of, of, of starving, uh, Isaac uh, Patrick says, How can I reach you if I have a question? You could always email us at ask at tfltruck.com and we, we see every question and if we can answer it quickly, we will. If we can't, uh, just bear with us, okay? What's, what, what's, what, what's Mike's official title? Is he a head flunky or what was he? What do you call Mike? Oh, man. Well, I don't Michael know. Curtis? Michael Curtis. He's an associate editor. Okay, okay. associate editor. Yes. He tried to get Big Green. <laughs> and Big Green, of course, had the hood up. <laughs> Oh, no. Was it on a fuel pump problem? Okay, Big Michael Green. Was Might as well just take the hood no, off no, no. Of Big Green. Michael was moving and he needed a truck. Right, he needed a truck. He tried to get Big Green, of course, and we know how dependable Big Green is. Come on. So anyway, I let him use Dodgezilla because we know it runs. And he, I told him he had to get me something. And look what he said. He got me a bag with, I think, cigars. What? Cigars. So, Maybe it's just an empty box. Look at this box. It's amazing. Holy cow, Ashton. Can Wait you show that I got to pick the lock. Can you show this? I got Show this closer. He gave me a wood box. Wood box. That's what's, pretty impressive. What's in the box? It's like a booster chair, you know. Well, let's see. Let's find out if I can open the combination. You got to open it. It's tricky. I don't know. Those Do we need a locks. knife for this? I don't know. Just break, break your fingernail off. I just broke my fingernail. Holy cow! And there's Look. a cigar. Look at that. You got me three cigars. Holy cow! Those are nice Whoa. ones. Maybe I gotta go. I gotta go. Hey, Michael. Do you have a, a cigar, Michael. cigar Michael. nipper? Michael, you can borrow my truck anytime. Oh, okay. uh, oh, if, oh, if, oh! He gave me a fox too. What's this? You lost your cigar cutter. Oh, a it's cigar a cigar cutter. I am so happy. I, I'm going to kiss you, Michael. I'm so happy. Oh, oh, I'm a cigar cutter. Oh, I'm excited now. Look at this. Oh, I love it. Look okay. at this. This is amazing. Kiss yourself on the arm for me. Go ahead. Oh, Go my ahead. goodness. Oh. oh, I'm excited. Uh, Ooh, it looked like Maduro's. Uh, anyway, uh, any more questions? Are we done? Let's go smoke some cigars. <laughs> we got things to do. I don't know. Uh, there's a question. Here's a question that I think you will hate. Okay. Tell Are you me. ready for Tell this? Me. I'm ready. Um, Justin says, 2019 Ram Rebel or Chevy Colorado ZR2? Which one would you pick? Oh, no. That's like comparing apples to watermelon. I mean, that's not like <laughs> apples to apples. I don't know. understand. I mean, a full-size installed. Now, ZR2, if you really want to go chase cows and do off-road, ZR2 is hard to beat. I right. would take the ZR2. If you want something that's more of a combination of a family vehicle, maybe towing something and off-road, then you got the Rebel. They're but different it, classes it, yeah, of Yeah, it, it is totally different. I mean, the ZR2, we all loved those when they first came out. And, of course, we love the Rebel, too. But the Rebel's a different category. It depends. I don't know how many kids you have. I mean, maybe you don't know who all your kids are. So but, I mean, you might want more room. In absolutely. Rebel. I mean, the Colorado starts at about forty-one grand, yeah. right? The Rebel starts around forty-four, uh, a little bit more with four-wheel drive because yeah. they also have a yeah. two-wheel drive one. Yeah. Um, but you can get a diesel in the ZR2, so yes, you got a few yes, more options. Yes. So about the same price, so it just depends. If you tow more, obviously go for the bigger truck. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a hard question to ask without more of your answers telling us. I yeah, mean, we know, need more information. I love uh, the about, interior on that Rebel. I love about it. About how you want to use your truck, right? Um, I'm trying to look through. <laughs> uh, Devcom88 says, all I get um, when I help people is a $3 burger. 
Wow. Holy cow. $3 burger, that doesn't sound very good. Hey, man, I tell um, you, I, I'm an old man. i got to get something back for all this <laughs> effort. You know, I have to drive 40 miles to get here, and that's uphill both ways. That's hard. It's, yeah, it is. I mean, that's it's not hard. like I just live next door. I mean, it's almost well, like Well, Mr. Truck, will you come back next week? I will. I will. Is it? Oh, that's, we already done with the show? Yeah. Well, we got more questions. What about this? Oh, you got that one asked. Well, okay. Do you, do you want to talk about the three liter Duramax that we know nothing about? Well, we, yeah, we don't really know. It's, we know it's coming out this winter. That's about all we know. Yeah. You know Probably yeah. in, maybe in 2019 calendar year. But this is good. Well, I just said to keep going. I, I'm yeah, hoping we, that if we, we can, if we can maybe get answer more questions on screen. I mean, it's nice to have these. I know people have big, long questions, but we've missed a lot of people on here because we just didn't have enough time, and I'd like to go answer some, some Well, of those. let me go through something. Um, you, you chat amongst yourselves. Hello, who am I going to talk to? I don't know. <laughs> what are these weird guys over here with microphones and, and headphones? And, uh, so are always dressed in black. What is it with these guys? Are, they, are you guys we, mimes? What we, are you guys? We, black is uh, uh, slimming. Okay. I want to look slim. That's why I wear vests and a girdle. I don't wear a girdle. Uh, I use, here, Defcom says, I use my Tundra to tow my Jeep, and the total weight, the Jeep and trailer, is about 6,500 pounds. Okay. And it only sagged about half an inch to an inch. Uh, would I still need a weight distribution hitch? Yes. I'm yes. surprised it didn't squat more than that. Yeah, and but you know, yeah. Usually, tundras like to squat. Yes, and, but no, um, that's that's much safer having a weight distributing hitch. But on that also, truck. you could check your owner's manual, right? Right. Well, uh, most all of them will say five thousand and above, and you know, you're a little above that. Right. I agree with that. And plus, a weight distribution. Yes, it costs money. Right. It's right, not free. Right. But it also helps you with sway. You can get the sway uh, control oh. one, right? Like the one we use. Yes, you want sway control, and definitely. I wish we had time to talk more about that 19 Chevy. We was, I mean, we was talking about that cool sticker in the tag. It tells you pin weight. Why don't you Girls talk about it? Fine. Well, if we have enough time, but we have. You know, it's really cool. They've got way out, of, way out of the bounds on new stuff for trailers on that half ton. I'm really impressed with them. Besides the towing mirror, but. They have the sticker in there, and I don't know if that's the safety compliance sticker replaces it, but it tells you, of course, your GVW. It shows right. your rear axle weight rating, shows your gross combined weight rating, the truck and the trailer. Right. It shows your pin weight, and that pin weight is based on that, you know, SAE 2807. So that means it's 10% on that size of a trailer. And I asked him, I said, you know, I know in weight distributing hitches, it says in your manual, you must, it's an act of God, use a weight distributing hitch over 5,000 pounds, or we will come down and pound. But you know, Ram and Ford say it's an option. I mean, it's it's suggested. Okay. GM says you must. Okay. And that has to do that'll affect your warranty. It'll affect your insurance. So I asked them, okay. So you got 10 percent. You tell me exactly what the pin weight is. So I know that's 10 percent of this number. So I can so figure it's out not, if my it's trailer 930 weight. pounds, it's 9,300 exactly. pounds for the trailer. So that's easy to calculate. But I'm saying now, you know, like me, if I'm in icy roads, if I'm on wild curves, I go a little higher pin weight. I want traction. You look at the semi. Semis have like 40 percent tongue weight. And that's why they fly by you on the ice and the snow because the tongue weight helps traction. They also have very yes, experienced drivers. Yes, on, on, so on pickups, usually. a lot of those I would go 15% on a, on a bumper pull if the conditions were that way. That's my opinion. So I kept asking them, and they couldn't find an answer. Just tell them got an answer. Is if that is that in gold? Now, if I go over 10%, will it affect my warranty and affect my insurance? And nobody can give me an answer. I'm hoping someday somebody will email me with the answer to that. But I love that tag. I think it's so cool. But that's the well, question I have: Is it going to be affect my insurance if I don't stay right it? 10% or what's going to happen? Here, here are two things. Uh, first of all, Roman and Tommy were also at the same Chevy I event, saw them. I saw them there. Um, that you were at. And they told me they were impressed by how hard you were working to get the answers. Well, I got they most said, of the answers, but that they one. They <laughs> said Mr. Truck was there every minute of the day. He was asking questions and was very diligent. So we appreciate your work. But oh, the certainly. second, I have a worry. I have a worry. You know that sticker you just talked about yeah. that's in the door of the Chevy? Right. That tells you all your stats for your particular exactly. truck. That's so cool. It matched the VIN number. It so matches that's, the VIN that's number. That's your truck, not some big bogus thing in some advertising. Do you know what my worry is? What? Is that part of our job, and the reason why we wrote this book, was to help people understand their tongue weights and gross combined weights. And if Chevy's doing it for us, Oh, no, they can't replace do, us. Do we still have a job? There's more questions. Yes, you got to buy the book. I mean, really, seriously, there's a lot more than just that in there. I mean, no, this, this book is for everybody. Yes, it's a, it also has some <laughs> stories. It does. Uh, it's fuel economy, stories, yeah. all kinds of stuff. So. Well, I'm so glad they're making it easier because that's, that's the most complicated thing about a truck is towing things. And you got to know all that. You want to save. You, I might be following you. I don't want your trailer to fall off and hit me. So it's really important that we learn all these things. And that's why I wrote the book. We want the knowledge to be out there. And... Uh, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. So I will get the answer to that. Maybe one of these uh, Ask Mr. Truck 
programs, I will all, know that answer. All, all I know is you don't want to uh, go over your axle weight rating right. or v vehicle rating right. or combined rating because that's what the truck is designed to and handle. they put all those numbers in there. They right. really did a good job. I mean, and then that, the towing section, there's an app right, right on your screen. That 8-inch screen, it tells you so much cool stuff on five different traders you can tow with it. One last question. How about that? One last question. Okay. A uh, YouTube user says 2019 Ram 1500 really needs a 6.4 liter V8, especially now that Ford is putting that high output EcoBoost in their F-150 with 450 horsepower. I say yay. I say yes. For which truck? For this one. They need a big Hemi in there. They do. And see, that was the only really disappointing thing at the launch of the Ram is that they didn't change engines. They didn't I, mean, I know the they got the torque. Right. They got the torque e torque thing coming out, right. which will boost, boost things a little bit. But Chevy did all kinds. Of, they did everything: engine, frame, body. But well, actually, Chevy didn't change the ratings either. But they have new engines coming. There, well, they they did some things to the five three. They did a few things. Well, they have them. And you've got the ten speed and the six two with the right. right. Yes, they do that, and that was interesting. So they have. Well, they'll you know they're not going to run on one cylinder like they told us. They'll run on two. They need to be balanced, and they can even run on three or four or five or whatever it is. Darn I it. mean, it's pretty cool what they can but do. But I think I, I think Ram. Um, will they put a six four? I don't know for sure. But the TRX is coming with a Hellcat. That's true. That's probably so, they don't want to cannibalize the market from that. So, so Hellcat everything. Just put the Hellcat. That in is everything. put a Hellcat and everything. That new that new Dakota when it comes should have a Hellcat. <laughs> that new Jeep pickup when it comes out should have a Hellcat. <laughs> the Wagoneer. Uh, what is what is it with this chick? Is this uh, Roman's girl? Roman likes her. Uh, okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, please, once again, send your questions to ask at tfltruck.com. And we'll have more Ask Mr. Truck segments because, you know, we always have fun uh, answering a lot of questions. So Jeff Johnson says, don't forget, uh, Sarah, kiss my hat. Well, Sarah is in Arizona. Oh, okay. Uh, you can kiss their hat. Sorry, uh, the hats are here. You can <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we don't do that kissing thing here. There's a lot of things we don't kiss. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. okay Thanks we'll see for you watching. Soon. This is Kent with MrTruck.com. Right. Thank you, Mr. Truck. Thank you. Is that a toupee? Your hair's kind of moved around since we started the show. Oh, gosh. I'm losing my hair.